The black box from 1010 Music is an extremely compact and powerful device I've been playing with lately as I'm borrowing it from a very generous friend. And I wanted to share my experience with some of its unique features as a companion device to the Electron Digitone. Uh, I received some questions about the combination setup after my latest portable performance video uh, with these two devices and I thought I could give a really basic tutorial showing you just how it is they can work together. Now the Digitone is an amazing FM synth and groove box at the same time, but its obvious drawback or limitation is that it has no sampling capabilities whatsoever. The Digitact is probably the most popular choice to combine it with, and it's marketed as a tailor-made companion to the Digitone. But the black box here is becoming an increasingly popular sampler uh, and receiving some regular firmware updates, which I should probably add if I'm gonna do a tutorial, but I'm just covering some basic stuff here. But those updates are making it more and more competitive. So I just wanna open up a conversation about this thing as another option uh, and why it has my attention as a really good sampler and in particular, why it's a good sampler for this synth. Both the black box and the DigiTact and similar devices are able to sequence samples. So I'm not gonna waste any time covering the common features of basic patterns one shot sample playback and those things because this is not an unboxing or a review. I think it just makes sense to rather skip right to focusing on showcasing the two unique features of the black box that make it something worth considering for your setup, uh, in my opinion, and a walkthrough of how you can choose to apply these. Now let's talk about those stereo samples. In an Ableton Live-esque clip launcher, you can quickly access rich stereo samples with virtually no time limit, which is really useful for drum loops, especially, which is what I mostly use, that have width or even uh, launching whole songs uh, in a DJ style if you want. This is underrated in and of itself because other samplers like the Digitact, while they're powerful in their own way, they only offer mono sampling and have a much shorter pattern length uh, limitation. This was basically the bread and butter of why I picked up this thing, uh, or why I'm borrowing it rather, because uh, once you have the loops prepared, it's really easy to focus your energy on the digitone and shaping the synth sounds and cueing things live. So that's what I did in my last performance. All you have to do is set the output of the black box into the digitone inputs, uh, and you have a master menu, which you get to with function LFO over to the master. Here you can actually set levels, um, pan the stereo width, even add a few different effect bits and pieces. Um, here's a quick demo just showing how extremely simple it is. Uh, I don't have a spare 3.5 um, MIDI adapter lying around for a clock, so I just did it the old school way and hit play at both uh, at the same time. Now I've switched these inputs around so that the digitone is actually going into the black box here. This can be a bit more challenging to manage, but if you know your way around the black box or you learn your way around the black box, um, this is gonna be more powerful because it's gonna let us use loops to bypass the polyphony limitations in the digitone in real time as well. So keep in mind that you can choose to record your digitone loops uh, into the black box while producing and then reverse the inputs later if you prefer the other setup for live performance. But hopefully this will make sense once I actually show you what I'm talking about. 
Just to start out, I have made a fresh drum pattern that is complex in comparison to what most people are able to make on the digitone. That's not because I am some kind of rhythmic genius, but rather, as you can see, uh, let's just hit play. We have one voice for each sound going through and as I add all of the tracks, not only are we using up all of the tracks, but our polyphony is starting to get filled up really quickly. So if you're not already aware of this, this is kind of the reason why people end up making what are really kind of thin sounding drums and using micro timing hacks to stack snares and kicks on the same track because they're worried about running out of voices and tracks that have a cap. And as soon as we wanted to add a melody on top of this thing, we're gonna run into some real issues because we don't really have any space to add a bass, a lead or chords or anything at all. So it's impossible to work with and our drums are gonna cut out as a result. However, we have the black box running. So let's try recording it in and loop this full drum track and see how it sounds. We can even kind of play around live so that we get a longer loop and we get a bit more dynamics. Since those four tracks are all running already on the black box in our loop right now, we can turn this down, turn it off, and everything is still going, which means we're entirely free to go over to a different pattern uh, and add something more sizable, something more polyphonic uh, without having to sacrifice the drums. Now I have a Hans Zimmer bass uh, preset all loaded up on here just to see how that sounds over the top. So we have the freedom to add extra tracks but honestly, I think we want to just abuse the power that we have with this loop. So if we go into the voice stealing menu or the unison menu, you can compare a single voice with no unison to sounds really rich so what we're doing with those eight voices is there's no way we can do this without the looping um, we're just running an FM loop and an FM mono bass sound that has eight voices with a ridiculous amount of richness and harmonics to just one note and we don't want to have to worry about voice stealing so let's try looping that in as well I'm just going to keep jamming here. So that's a general overview. With this setup, in my mind, I feel a lot more open to new possibilities and I see how they fit together really well, but it depends on your personal workflow and on your preference. Dave Meck had a really interesting workaround to the Digitone 
uh, by both combining uh, a digitone and digitact. Uh, and originally he had multiple ones, but he also added the Allen Heath Zone DB4, I think it was, as a mixer and looper so he can run multiple patterns at the same time, which is the same kind of logic, but I think the obvious uh, advantage, disadvantage here is this is extremely compact and can run off battery power, um, but his solution gives you a more tactile DJ club feeling. So you can grab faders quickly and uh, have a little or a lot more power. The Digitact, as I mentioned, is the popular choice and it's popular for a reason. Uh, I'm not saying that this is better, it's just different. They have pros and cons. That workflow might work for you if you're really into the Electron workflow, not to mention Overbridge and you have that familiarity already being a hardcore Digitone user. But for me personally, I was just looking for something to play long samples, use loops on the fly. So right now the black box is filling those gaps very well and I see it being a very cool part of this Digitone experience for me personally. Uh, I hope this has helped in any way. If you're considering a comparison sampler or a module of any kind, um, yeah. I hope it gave you a new perspective and if so, please consider subscribing for uh, more tutorials, gear walkthroughs, uh, samples I give out for free every now and then and performances every week. Uh, let me know in the comments as well if you have a preferred similar combo with the Digitone, Digitact, Black Box uh, or where you see the pros and cons of each of these setups. Thanks so much for sticking around and watching if you made it this far. Have a good one.